Two major developments in the former president's second defamation trial involving writer E. Jean Carroll to tell you about, where a verdict is likely next week. Sources late today saying that Trump is likely to appear in court again Monday, which would be the third time he's attended the trial. He, of course, does not have to appear, but as we've noted, has become a part of his unofficial campaign schedule. Also today, his legal team once again demanded a mistrial. This was over some emails deleted by Carroll they claim are crucial. Now, earlier in the week, as we told you before, the judge denied the motion almost immediately after it was raised. Now, sometimes getting lost in this trial is the jury decision last year that underpins the current trial, that Donald J. Trump was guilty of sexual abuse. Kara Scannell has more on that. It happened nearly three decades ago in a New York department store. Advice columnist E. Jean Carroll says she was leaving Bergdorf Goodman when she ran into Donald Trump. He said, come advise me. I want to buy a present. I said, oh, for who? He said, for a girl. So I was enchanted. Carol says they went to the lingerie department on the sixth floor and joked about who should try on a sheer bodysuit. She followed Trump into a dressing room. That's when she said a lighthearted encounter turned into a life-changing assault. The minute I was in there, he shut the door and pushed me up against the wall and bang, bang my head on the wall and kiss me. I just, it was so shocking. She says Trump pinned her to the wall and pulled down her tights. That was when it turned serious. I realized that this was, this was, this was a fight. Carol says she fled the store and largely kept the 1996 encounter secret. It wasn't until June 2019 when she shared the story publicly. New York Magazine ran an excerpt from her new memoir. Trump has continued to deny the encounter happened and even knowing Carol. I have no idea who this woman is. This is a woman who's also accused other men of things, as you know. Uh, it is a totally false accusation. Carol first sued Trump in 2019 for defamation, but for years he successfully tied the case up in litigation. Thank you. In 2022, under New York State's Adult Survivors Act, she filed a second lawsuit against Trump, this time for battery and defamation. That case went to trial last year. Trump didn't appear in court, but his video deposition was played before the jury where he denied raping Carol. She said that I did something to her that never took place. There was no anything. I know nothing about this nut job. He even mistook Carol in a photo for his second wife, Marla Maples. That's Marla, yeah, that's, that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? No. Here. And when questioned about it, he defended the infamous Access Hollywood tape, where Trump was caught off camera making lewd remarks about women. This is very old news, fully litigated during debates, during everything else, fully litigated. Okay. And you know what I said then, and I say it now? Locker room talk. That was locker room talk. The jury ultimately found that Trump did sexually abuse Carol and defame her. They awarded Carol $5 million. But Trump didn't stop. One day after the verdict at a CNN town hall, Trump repeated his statements. And I swear, and I've never done that. And I swear to I have no idea who the hell, she's a Mr. whack President. job. Carol updated her 2019 lawsuit, now seeking more than $10 million for Trump's repeated verbal attacks and denials. Meanwhile, the former president is squeezing in court appearances to his packed campaign schedule. His attorneys say he may testify next week. Hello, New Hampshire. Kara Scannell, CNN, New York. Joined now by conservative attorney George Conway. So, George, can you just remind our viewers of how you met E. Jean Carroll and what role you played in her decision to sue the former president? Yeah, I met her one day in 2019, I guess it was, right? After, about a week or two after uh, the report of her, her story came out and the book came out and the excerpt in New York Magazine came out. And I had written a piece in the Washington Post talking about how, um, how if anyone believed Juanita Broderick, uh, who made the claims against Bill Clinton that, uh, that Donald Trump trumpeted during the 2016 campaign, then they should really believe uh, Jean Carroll as well, because she actually had witnesses who she told about the event right after it happened. And I thought that, you know, it was, it was pretty compelling and pretty persuasive. And I ran into Jean Carroll just by happenstance at a cocktail party in Manhattan a few days after writing that piece. And she came up to me and introduced herself and thanked me for writing the piece in the Washington Post and, and asked, you know, some people are saying I should sue. Do you think, you think I have a claim? And I said, 
yes. I mean, immediately it took, it took basically no thinking. It's like, it, he's, he's lying about you and that's a defamation. That's, that's defamation claim. And then about 10 seconds later, I, I thought, oh, I know precisely the lawyer who should be handling this, uh, an excellent lawyer who had become a friend of mine, uh, uh, Robbie Kaplan, who, had, who has been since, since that day representing her. And that's, that's how I got to know Jean Carroll. And that's kind of how she met, that's how she met uh, her lawyer. And, and the rest is what we have now. Yeah, as you know, Alina uh, Hobb, the former president's attorney, questioned Carroll this week about her association with you, asked if you yeah. planted the seed for her to sue the former president. Does it matter in any legal sense who, if anyone, advises a plaintiff to file a lawsuit? No, no, not at all. And it came out in the first trial. I mean, in fact, uh, E. Jean's lawyers brought that out just so that you know, there's no no secret there, no nothing to hide there. But it's also it's also completely irrelevant. But some, for some reason, uh, Trump and his counsel uh, seem obsessed with that fact, and they they brought it up consistently again and again in the first trial to the point where the judge had to tell them to stop. And then they did it. They're they're doing it again this week. Um, I'm kind of flattered by it, but it's all it, it's just kind of bizarre, frankly. What do you what do you make of how Trump has handled this phase of the case? Well, I mean, look, I, I, I think that this whole case is um, something of a microcosm uh, of, of, of his, frankly, his, his, his mental state. Um, you know, his tendency to lie and lie again, his tendency to attack. I mean, you know, he, he, lied about, he lied about the fact that he never met her when, in fact, there was a photograph that came out. Of, of her with him in 2019, uh, uh, no, in, 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 in the 1990s. He then lies about, uh, uh, about, about what happened. Um, he, li he then lies about, about uh, he says that uh, she, she, she's not his type. He said that in, in, in 2019. And it turns out then he confuses her, as, as, you, as you saw, as, as that excerpt showed, uh, for his former wife, Marla Lay Maples, uh, which means that, yeah, you know, she must have been his type. And it's just, it's just the craziness of it all. And then the fact that he continually, after being found to have defamed her, and after a jury found that, um, you know, that, 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 that he raped her, um, he's then continually to assert that, you know, it didn't happen again and again. And he's doing it outside the courtroom. And it's just, it's crazy. It, it, inside the courtroom, his lawyers are trying to minimize uh, what he did and minimize what happened. And yet he's, he's repeating the lies over and over again and repeating the defamation, which completely defeats uh, what his lawyers are trying to, what his lawyers trying to do inside the courthouse. It's crazy. George Conway, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.